Hello and thank you for listening to this production of The Bishop's Wife, based on the screenplay by Leonardo Bercovici, Robert E. Sherwood, Billy Wilder, and Charles Brackett, produced by Samuel Goldwyn and inspired by the novella by Robert Nathan and adapted for radio by the Lux Radio Theater. This production stars Brian Cadena as Bishop Henry Brom, Rachel Cordell as Julia Brom, and Chris Dane as Dudley the Angel, featuring the vocal talents of Casey Reardon, Bianca Kronig, Andrew Frost, and Jessica Ma, with music composed by Hugo Friedhofer, featuring the Robert Mitchell Boys Choir. We hope you enjoy the show. It's a late afternoon in December, in a rather shabby section of a large city. Two old friends have an unexpected meeting. Julia! What a wonderful surprise! My dear, beautiful Julia. Professor Weatheridge? But what are you doing here? I am about to negotiate the purchase of a Christmas tree. I didn't know you celebrated Christmas. I thought you had no religion. I don't. But I like a Christmas tree. It reminds me of my childhood. <laughs> Could you imagine? Me having ever been a child. Tell me, how's Henry? Oh, he's well, I suppose but so tired and worried. Raising for the new cathedral, huh? It's slow work, Professor. And you? How is your book coming? Oh, splendidly. Greatest history of Rome since Gibson's. I wish it weren't so late. The cathedral committee is meeting with Henry. I really should be there. Well, one of these days we'll have time for a nice talk again. Oh, here. Uh, here. For Henry's cathedral fund. This coin? It has uh, very little value, I'm afraid. Just an old Roman coin. I, I picked it up years ago in Italy. Oh, it's a wonderful contribution. Nonsense. It might be what's called the widow's mite. Only I'm not a widow. Julia, what's the matter? Nothing. I... Oh, if Henry and I could only spend Christmas back here, where we were so happy, with you, with all our old friends... Now, now, now. Oh, I'm sorry. That was really very childish of me. Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye, Julia. Why, Professor, how good to see you again. Hmm? Who are you? And how well you look after all these years. Well, don't you remember me? Uh, well, let's see. It, um... It wasn't Vienna, was it? Vienna? Beautiful old Vienna. When I was lecturing on Roman history. And what splendid lectures they were. And what a one you were with the ladies. Fancy you remembering that. <laughs> I've been standing on the corner watching you, Professor. You and Julia. You know Julia? In a way, yes. Poor girl. She's unhappy? Y yes. When were you in Vienna? Oh, many times. I... I'm interested in Julia, Professor. And Henry, what seems to be their trouble? Oh, uh, no special trouble, I imagine. Henry's a bishop now, hmm? Oh, yes. Uh, that used to be his church over there. St. Timothy's? Perishing from neglect. It's such a nice little church. Well, delighted to have seen you again, Professor. Strange. Unless I've completely lost my memory... I've never seen that fellow before in my life. Julia? I'm terribly sorry I'm so late, Henry. Has everyone gone? He yes, dear. Some time ago. Not another argument, Henry. Mrs. Hamilton... Mrs. Hamilton is a selfish, vain old... <clears throat> she made it very clear, Julia. Either we build the cathedral the way she wants it, or it won't be built at all. Oh, what a ghastly meeting. You didn't give in to her? Indeed not. I made it very clear I have no intention of being strangled by her purse strings. Oh, Henry, I'm proud of you. I had a most unchristian impulse to take those blueprints and give her a good whack over her... mink coat. I beg your pardon, Bishop. Yes, Miss Cassaway. Mr. Trevor's on the phone. Tell him the bishop will call him back, please. After dinner. Yes, Mrs. Brom. Henry, 
What's happened to you? To us? To our marriage? That's a strange question to ask. No. We used to be so happy. We used to make other people happy. Henry, that was your gift. You're no financier and you're no promoter. Kowtowing to people, flattering them, begging them. It's got to be done, Julia. I want this cathedral to stand like a great beacon. I want its light to shine. I want- Yes, yes, Henry. Oh, here. Here's a contribution I collected. Oh? What is it? It's an old Roman coin. From Professor Weatheridge? Well, what does he think I can do with it? Well, it's a beginning. Now all you need is just another four million dollars. Julia, don't be flippant about this. Well, if dinner's ready, let's have it over with. I have a lot of work to do tonight. The soup's very good, Matilda. Oh, Julia, I'm... I'm sorry I was so thoughtless just now. I was... I was just thinking... Tomorrow, perhaps, we could spend the day together. Henry! Call on the professor, maybe. Have lunch at Michelle's. Michelle's? Oh, it's been years since we've been there. Uh, please forgive me. Yes, Miss Cassaway? Well, I've been trying to explain to Mr. Trevor, but he simply insists upon talking to you. Oh, Julia... He's on the cathedral committee, isn't he? Well, go ahead, dear. You'd better talk to him. Yes, Mr. Trevor? Very well, Mr. Trevor. I'll be there. 10.30 tomorrow morning? Good night. You may as well go home now, Miss Cassaway. But there's still a great deal of work to do, sir. You're a secretary, not a machine. Now, run along. Thank you. Oh, and don't forget, you have a speech to make tomorrow at the Junior Assembly. Oh, no. What time? It's a luncheon meeting at one o'clock. Good night, Bishop. Good night, Miss Cassaway. Oh, God. What am I to do? Can't you help me? Can't you tell me? Oh, God. God, please, please help me. Yes? Good evening. Oh, what can I do for you? Well, that isn't the question, Henry. Oh? Well, what is it? What can I do for you? Look, I'm afraid you must telephone for an appointment. I'm in the middle of dinner. I know, Henry. But you asked for help, you know. I asked... Who told you I asked for help? Well, you are known to be a good man, and you were heard. I was instructed to come here in answer to your prayer. Who are you? I'm an angel. I beg your pardon? An angel. An angel? I knew it. I knew it. I've been working too hard. Now, 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 don't be alarmed. I know it's hard to believe, even for you. But this is my district, and I- Do you mind if I sit down? <laughs> no, no, please do. And now let's see. You have some problems concerning the building of a new cathedral. Yes. Oh, here, here's a picture of it. Beautiful. Magnificent. Well, Henry, do you believe I am what I say I am? Well, how can I? I have nothing but your word for it. But you are a bishop. You, of all people, can trust the word of an angel. Well, what do you propose to do? Perform a miracle? If necessary. Well, why don't you? Why don't you create a cathedral with a wave of your hand? Oh, no, no, no. You wouldn't want me to do that, would you? How would you explain it? Well, I... Henry, is anything wrong? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you had a collar. Oh, how have you been, Julia? I'm Dudley. Henry is engaging me to help with his work. You mean you're going to be his assistant? That's it exactly. I'm going to try to help Henry get some relaxation. Oh, that's what I've been praying for. Oh? You too, hmm? Henry, I'm so relieved, dear. Where did you come from, Dudley? Oh, all around. Julia, this man claims that he's an a- 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 I- 
I've been doing social work downtown. Julia, if you don't mind, I must talk to this gentleman alone. We were just having dinner, Dudley. Why don't you join us? Well, that's very kind of you, but I really must go. I'll see you both in the morning. In the morning? Oh, yes. Bright and early. I'll wait in the dining room, Henry. Good night. Good night, Julia. Are you, uh... Are you sure you're an angel? Oh, I, I know it isn't easy, Henry, but you've just got to take me on faith. Yes, but for how long? How long will it take? Until you can utter another prayer and say that you have no further need of me. Then I'll be gone and forgotten. Julia's waiting, Henry. Yes, I know, but I still don't understand, Dudley. Dudley? Dudley, where are you? Dudley? What's wrong, Henry? You look so pale. Do I? Sit down, dear. Henry, what's the rest of Dudley's name? I, I don't know. Why, Henry, you're trembling. I'm not surprised. A lesser man would... would quiver. Well, you'll feel better after you've eaten. Matilda's baked your favorite dessert, dear. Angel food cake. <laughs> Henry? Henry, what is it? Bishop? Bishop Brom? Oh, good morning, Miss Gassaway. Why, I was just in your study, sir. There's a man in there. He says he's your new assistant. Oh, then he did come back. He says we're going to be working together. Yes, there doesn't seem much I can do about it. Well, well, run along to the office, Miss Gassaway. I'll go in and see him. Yes, sir. Well, here I am, Henry, completely at your service. It may interest you to know I didn't sleep 20 minutes last night, and I don't mind adding I'm in a highly nervous condition. Oh, well, then that's the first thing we have to... Good morning, Julia. Good morning, Dudley. It's a lovely day. Lovely. Henry and I are going out together. Oh, Julia, I'm terribly sorry, but we can't. I, I've got to see Mr. Trevor at 10.30 and... After that, there's the Junior Assembly. But you promised, Henry. Yes, I, I know I did. But, well, Dudley could represent you at those meetings, couldn't he? Could I? That's out of the question. They expect me. It would never do if I sent an a, a assistant. Excuse us, Dudley. I want to speak to my wife. Oh, uh, of course. In the hall, dear. Julia, you see, the trouble is, well, that man in there, oh, I can't explain. <sighs> you needn't try, Henry. Oh, but you mustn't think. This is the way it is. This is the way it always will be. Well, I'll tell Matilda that she can have the rest of the day off for Christmas shopping, and I'll take care of Debbie. I'll see you at dinner, Henry. What are you doing, Dudley? Well, I'm just looking through your files, Henry. I see that Mrs. Hamilton has pledged a million dollars to the Cathedral Fund, but she hasn't sent her check yet. Never mind that file. That's work for a bookkeeper, not an eh. Eh. Work for a bookkeeper. Well, so you're beginning to believe in me. I don't know who you are. I don't know where you came from or who sent you. I only wish you'd make haste. Because the cathedral must be built? Obviously, that's the most important thing. Or because Julia must be happy. It's going to be difficult to help you, Henry, unless I'm sure of what it is you really want. Yes, well, I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me. Mr. Trevor likes punctuality. Well, run along, Henry. This file's in an awful mess. I think I'll reorganize it. I still think you're wasting your time on unimportant details. Oh, nothing's unimportant, Henry. Remember, we're interested even in the lowliest sparrow. Hello? Oh, hello, Debbie. Now oh, come in, come in. How did you do that just now? All those cards in Daddy's file. You just 
waved your hand and they all jumped out of the box and jumped in again. Oh, that? <laughs> well, that's just my system of rearranging files. Well, do it again! Some other time, hmm? You're Dudley, aren't you? Mommy told me. Mommy says you're very nice. Oh, well, that's extremely kind of Mommy. She said that maybe with you here, maybe we'll get to see Daddy once in a while. Yes, maybe we will. Debbie, that'll be enough of you, dear. Come along. Yes, Mommy. Oh, so you're going out? Uh, to the park. I'm going to play in the snow. Goodbye, Dudley. Goodbye, Debbie. Have a good time. Julia! Dudley, I didn't expect to see you here. Oh, I often walk in the park. Well, Debbie seems to be having a fine time. <laughs> Regular snowbird. Aren't you supposed to be working? Oh, I always take a walk before lunch. Relaxing, you know. Oh. I wish you could convince Henry of that. Speaking of lunch, Julia, I thought I'd go to Michelle's. Ever been there? Michelle's? Oh, <laughs> yes. We used to go there often. Years ago. Well, how about going there today? You and I? To Michelle's? Oh, no. No, I, I couldn't. Why not? Well... Surely you don't think Henry would mind. Oh, no, no. It isn't that. Well, you see, Matilda's off shopping and I have to look after Debbie. Oh, yes, yes, but there's Matilda now. Hello, Miss Brom. Matilda? I just thought, Miss Brom, I just thought that, if you wish, I'll take Debbie home. But, Matilda... You're shopping? Oh, I finished it. I finished it so quick. It was just like a miracle. You don't say. I thought Debbie might like to go home and make Christmas cookies. Oh, I, I'm sure she'd love to, but... Well then, Miss Brum, I'll just go and get her. Well, Julia? Michelle's? I... I think that would be very nice. Good. Dudley? Yes? Just a minute ago, when you said you saw Matilda... Yes? Oh, it's nonsense. What nonsense? You were looking the other way when you said you saw her. Oh? Was I? I mean... I mean, I thought you were. <laughs> How silly of me. Wait here, Dudley. I'll say goodbye to Debbie. Julia! Julia! I'm home, Julia! Why, Bishop? I thought you were out for lunch. Well, I cancelled my appointment, Matilda. Are Mrs. Brom and Debbie here? Well, Debbie's upstairs, sir, but Mrs. went out to lunch with Mr. Dudley. Ah, well, she said... With Dudley? Why, yes, sir. I, I thought you knew, sir. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, dear. I'm so glad you knew about Michelle's, Dudley. It's so nice to be back here again. Only... Only? Well, you seem to know so much. <laughs> Makes me feel uncomfortable. Well, in that case, I'm sorry I ever learned anything. You have memories of this place, haven't you? Yes. As a matter of fact, it was in this restaurant that Henry asked me to marry him. Yes, I know. You know? I... I mean, <laughs> I know how you must feel. Hmm. There's a fortune teller over there. You care to have your palm read? <laughs> no, thank you. Would you? Oh, I know too much about myself as it is. And I... I know so little about myself. Oh, really? May I look at your hand? Can you tell fortunes, too? It's not too difficult. Well, what do you see? Hmm. I never noticed, Julia. Your eyes are green. I see a great deal of happiness. I see a woman who's adored. I see a rich, full life. Do you see Henry's new cathedral? Ah, uh, no. No, I don't. And Debbie? Oh, no need to worry about her. She'll be like you, Julia. She'll have your youth and beauty no matter how old she lives to be. But people do grow old. No, not everybody. Only those who are born old to begin with. You, Julia, were born young. You'll remain that way. I wish I could believe you. You may. You haven't looked at my hand once. I simply don't know what to think of you, Dudley. Whether you're serious or joking. Well, I'm at my most serious when I am joking. Well, then maybe you should... Oh, no. 
Well? That table over there. No, no, don't look. Three ladies. All on the cathedral committee. They're simply glaring at me. Really? Well, glare back. They saw you holding my hand. Oh. Well then, if you'll excuse me, I'd better do something about it, hadn't I? What did you do to them? Now they're smiling at me. Look. Look, they're waving. Well, wave back, Julia. Oh, yes. I didn't do anything to them. Just introduced myself. Chatted a moment, ordered a drink. A drink? They took it. Sure, stingers. They're very friendly, Julia. They promised to drop by our table a little later. Dudley, may I make an understatement? Oh, please do. You are a very unusual man. I'll let you in on something, Julia. You're quite right. I enjoyed lunch very much, Dudley. Now, don't you think we'd better go home? I thought you liked to walk. Oh, I do, but... Oh, Dudley, wait. There's a friend of mine. Professor Wuthridge? Professor, wait! Julia! What wonderful luck meeting you again. This man, are, are you with him? Yes, of course. Dudley, this is Professor Wuthridge. Oh, the professor knows me well. University of Vienna. Young man, I don't believe you've ever been near Vienna. It's a game we play, Julia. He always pretends he's never seen it before. Dudley is Henry's new assistant. You mean you really know this fellow? Of course I do. Well, in that case, how about dropping into my humble diggers for a bit of yuletide cheer? Oh, I'd love to, but only for a moment. Come along, Dudley. It's just around the corner. Ah, just enough left in the bottle. Here's your glass, Dudley. We'll drink to Julia, to a charming lady. Ah, to a charming lady. You've noticed. Yes. Isn't it more remarkable that you had? When you want to know about a woman, ask the old men. They know. Well, Professor, when are you going to show us your book? My book? Ha! Huh. Never. Please? Oh, you're writing a book? You didn't know. You didn't tell me. I described the book in detail in the course of those lectures I gave in Vienna. Julia, now I'm certain this fellow's an imposter. Oh. Oh, oh, that book. Well, I thought you had finished that one years ago. Oh. Oh, I see. Um, no, no. Uh, for twenty years I've talked about that book, but in all that time I... I haven't written a word. Not one word. But why not? Because I can't think of anything original to say. Just the same old monotonous history, dry as dust. Never could find the right words. Either to tell a pretty girl or to write a book. Even when you had this coin to inspire you? Why, that's the coin you gave to Henry, Professor. Why, yes, I borrowed it from Henry's desk. You wasted your time. It's worthless. Oh, on the contrary. This coin is one of the rarest of all antiques. Only 100 of these coins were ever minted by Julius Caesar 2,000 years ago. That was when Cleopatra visited Rome. Presumably, these coins were used to pay her hotel bill. Why, that's amazing! Nobody knew about it except Caesar's wife, and she had the coins destroyed. But this one she overlooked. It's an unwritten chapter in history, and you, Professor, will write it. Do you know any more stories like that? Oh, any number of them. Well, you're a curious fellow, Dudley. Have you just begun to notice that? Where do you come from? Well, what if I told you that I come from another planet? Would you believe me? I don't know. I'd believe you, Dudley. And you'd be right, Julia. As always. We all come from our own little planets. That's why we're all different. That's what makes life interesting. Oh, it's getting late. I must be leaving, really. If my wide model wasn't empty, we could say goodbye with another drink. Empty? Yes, I had barely enough for... The bottle. It's... it's half full. Oh, save for next time, Professor. I'm really getting old when I can't see what's inside a wine bottle. Uh, Dudley? Yes, my friend? There's one thing that troubles me greatly. Well? 
To write a history is a tremendous task. I, I wonder... Will I have time to finish it? You'll finish it. You'll have the time. I, I don't know why I asked you that question. How would you know? Yet, somehow I believe you. You see, for quite a while now, every time I passed a cemetery, I felt as if I were apartment hunting. Goodbye, Professor. Come and see us, please. I will, I will. Goodbye, and God bless you both. I'll pass that recommendation along. Thank you, Professor. They're coming up the walk now, Bishop. Uh, Ms. Brom and Mr. Dudley. Oh, they are? Well, I hope dinner isn't spoiled, Matilda. Oh, no, sir. I had sort of a feeling they might be late. Very considerate of you. Henry? Good evening, Julia. I'm sorry I'm so late, dear. Hello, Henry. Good evening, Dudley. We had the most marvelous time. Oh, I wish you'd been with us. Yes, I wish I had. Is Debbie asleep yet? She's waiting to see you. Oh, good. I'll go right up. I trust you spent a profitable afternoon, Dudley? Oh, yes, yes. Did you have a profitable afternoon, Henry? Not very. Dudley, I'd like to see you for a moment. I mean, here in my study. Certainly. This won't take long, but I'd, I'd rather not be interrupted. You'll excuse me if I lock the door. Dudley... I simply cannot go on like this. Can you prove to me that you are an angel? Proof? You mean a document? Oh, surely you of all people should know that angels need no passports. I'd be a lot happier if I could see you perform a miracle. Well, what kind? Well, make this desk rise up and fly around the room. Oh, Henry, Henry, please, I didn't come here to do tricks. I'm surprised at you. I don't believe you are an angel at all. I think you're a demon right out of- Henry, no. No, don't say that word. Well, anyway, now you know how I feel. Yes. Now, wait a minute, Dudley. I'm not through yet. There's another matter I- The door. I, I locked that door. He just opened it and walked out. Dudley! Wait a minute. Dudley! Now it's locked again. Dudley! Dudley! He went upstairs, dear, to say goodnight to Debbie. Oh! Oh! Anything wrong? Oh, no. No, no, no. Nothing. Oh, you look very well, Julia. Very bright and gay. I feel gay, Henry. I think... I think you're an excellent wife, Julia. Why... why, thank you. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of the well-ordered life we lead, and I want you to know that I think the credit for that is due to you much more than to me. Thank you again, dear. Do you think I'm an excellent husband? Of course, dear. Henry, I hope you're going to be able to take things easier now. I mean, with Dudley here, I think he's very able. You do? Yes. He knows so many things. What, for instance? Well, you should have seen him this afternoon. We met Professor Wetheridge. Why, Dudley knows more about history than he does. He should. He's been at it longer. What? Oh, nothing. I'll drop in to see Debbie now, dear. Don't you know any stories, Mr. Dudley? Oh, I know hundreds of stories, Debbie. Well, I think it would be very nice of you to tell me one. Well, I know a story that happened many, many years ago, about a boy who lived in a little town. What was his name? His name was David. He was a shepherd, and the town where he lived was called Bethlehem. Oh, I know Bethlehem. That's where the star was. That's right. Only David lived long before the star. Well, one night, David was out in the hills, tending his sheep. He was playing the harp and singing. Then all of a sudden, an angel came down and spoke to him. How did David know he was an angel? Oh, he didn't know. That's the way it always is. Angels come down and put ideas into people's heads, and then people feel very proud of themselves because they think it was all their own idea. Well, anyway, this angel spoke to David. One of your lambs has strayed, he said. 
So David put aside his harp and went out to the darkness to find the lamb. Of course, the angel guided him, and when David found the lamb, he saw a great ferocious lion there. Oh dear. So David said to the lion, you get away from that lamb. And the lion said, you get away from me or I'll eat you too. Did David run away? No, the angel put another idea into his head. And David took out his sling and hurled a stone right between the lion's eyes. Served him good and right. <laughs> yes, I think it did. And David picked up the lamb and carried it back to the fold. And then he felt so happy that he took out his harp and made up a new song. It started like this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters, he... Oh, come in, Henry. I think you can tell the rest of this. Uh, some other time. Well, good night, Daddy. Good night, darling. Now, if you're ready, Dudley, so is dinner. Thank you, Henry. Thank you. So right after dinner, Henry, we'll get a taxi and go down to St. Timothy's. St. Timothy's? Tonight? Of course, dear. The choir's rehearsing for the benefit. They... Henry, we promised Mr. Miller we'd... Oh, Julia, I telephoned Mrs. Hamilton this afternoon. Henry! I apologized to her for some of the things I've said. I had to. And she said I might call on her tonight. But the rehearsal's just for you. A million dollars from Mrs. Hamilton, dear, is far more important. Besides, Mr. Miller will be delighted to see you. You're his bishop, Henry. And besides, I just don't like going alone. My evening seems quite free, Henry. Oh, no. No, no, no. Definitely not. You've done enough already. Well, I was about to suggest that I see Mrs. Hamilton, and you take Julia to St. Timothy's. You and Mrs. Hamilton? Oh, no. Well, it's just a suggestion. Dudley, would you mind very much going with me? Julia! Yes, Henry? Well? I think that might be a very good solution. Thank you, Dudley. You're welcome, Henry. Mrs. Brom, oh, I'm delighted to see you. Hello, Mr. Miller. Oh, this is Mr. Dudley, the bishop's new assistant. Ah, uh, Mr. Dudley, it's a pleasure. Thank you. The bishop will try to get here later, Mr. Miller. Something important came up. Oh, of course. He's such a busy man now. He didn't want to delay the rehearsal. Oh, Mrs. Brom, I'm terribly embarrassed. Look over there. Only two of the boys have come. Oh, it's just too difficult, I suppose, trying to compete with basketball and Christmas. I wouldn't worry, Mr. Miller. They'll all show up. Hiya, boys. Hi! What do you sing? Me? Uh, first soprano. Well, how about giving out? You, you mean alone? Well, you've got Rupert with you. Hiya, Rupert. Well, what do you say? It's okay by me. Fine. I'll start you off at the piano. some of the other boys. Why? Why, yes. Maybe basketball isn't so important after all. You can be proud of them, Mr. Miller. They sing beautifully. They've never sung so well. Never. Now look, they're all here now. Oh, if Henry could hear this. Like, like angels. Better. Believe me. I'm so relieved, Bishop Brom. You needed to make any further apologies. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Hamilton. And in view of your generosity, the George B. Hamilton Memorial Chapel shall be located wherever you specify in the new cathedral. And now we're getting somewhere, aren't we? Oh, there's another matter. Uh, the window depicting St. George and the dragon? Yes. I should very much like the countenance of St. George to resemble my late husband. Oh, uh, who do you see as the dragon? Oh, 
How any old dragon? Thank you. Well, now that we're in such complete accord, would you mind very much if we postpone the details? Julie is waiting for me at St. Timothy's. Very well. We can go over the plans when I transfer the funds. Thank you so much. I... <laughs> well, that's strange. Is anything the matter? Well, this chair. I can't get up. It's stuck to my... I mean, I'm stuck to it. Stuck to the chair? Yes, it doesn't seem quite right, does it? Stevens! Stevens, come here, please. Yes, madam? There's something wrong with the bishop's chair. Oh, madam, it must be the new varnish. The furniture people should have warned us. I do hope I'm not harming the chair. This is preposterous. Awkward situation, isn't it? Uh, Perhaps you'll give a little pull at the back, Stevens. Yes, sir. Again, please. (coughs) Your trousers, sir. I'm afraid if we pull any more... Mrs. Hamilton, may I use the telephone? Yes, of course. It's right over there. Can you walk? After a fashion. That chair, madam, it clings to him like a brother. Well, do something, Stevens. Call the shop. Get uh, a plumber. Hello? Matilda, this is Bishop Brom. I'm at Mrs. Hamilton's. I want you to come here at once with another pair of trousers. Hmm? Well, what difference does it make? Just bring me another pair of trousers. Thank you. I'm so sorry this has happened. Oh, if I could only get in touch with Julia, or Dudley, or... Dudley. This is all his doing. Dudley! Now, 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 Bishop, don't be nervous. Uh, Have a chair, Bishop. I have a chair. I can't imagine what happened to Henry. He was so sure he'd meet us there. Well, I suppose he's detained at Mrs. Hamilton's. Oh, of course. You know, Dudley, it's a strange thing. You seem to be able to make me feel as if everything's going to be all right. Everything could be all right for everyone, Julia, if people would only learn to behave like human beings. It's a lovely night, isn't it? Oh, driver, could you take us through the park, please? That's out of your way, lady. You getting bored with us, driver? Say, I'll drive you by way of Mexico City if you want me to. That's the trouble with this country. Too many people don't know where they're going and they want to get there too fast. I'd call you two very unusual people. Oh, thank you. You're very perceptive. You know your destination, but you're in no hurry to get there. And you're not reluctant to invest an extra four bits for a detour with Mother Nature. You crazy or something? Look where you're going! Oh! Oh, that was really a close one. Holy smoke, did you see the way I missed that truck? Like, like a miracle. Yes, I know, but I... Just don't overplay your hand. Hey, hey, look! They're ice skating over there. Well, so they are. Julia, we're going ice skating. Oh, no. No. No, we mustn't. It's too late. We couldn't. Do you really think we could? You can stop here, driver. We're going ice skating. Oh, uh, you too. Well, this is it, Sylvester. What do I owe you? Not a cent, my friend. Wanna know why? Because you and the little lady here have restored my faith in human nature. Well, good night, Dudley. Good night, Julia. Good night, Sylvester. Sylvester is a noble soul. His children and his children's children will rise up and call him blessed. Oh, this has been the most wonderful evening I've had in years. It's the most wonderful evening I've had in centuries. You're a beautiful skater, Julia. In fact, you're beautiful. Well, well, you've come home. Oh. Hello, Henry. Henry, what happened to you? I thought you were going to meet us at St. Timothy's. What happened to you? It's almost ten o'clock. You'll never guess, Henry. We've been ice skating. Ice skating? Yes. You should have seen Dudley. He's marvelous, Henry. Oh, and those boys at St. Timothy's, the way they sang, it was simply heavenly. I'm sure it was. 
Did you have a successful meeting with Mrs. Hamilton? Quite satisfactory, thank you. Good. I'll be right down, Henry. Dudley. Yes, Henry? Whatever went on in these last few hours, there's one thing I'm sure of. Julia is absolutely blameless. Of course she is. But you? You deliberately stopped me from joining you. By the seat of my pants. Well, now, Julia had a very good time. But I did not. Henry, if you had sent me to represent you with Mrs. Hamilton, I would have gone. But you didn't, so I represented you with your wife. Oh, is that part of the normal duties of an a- of an angel? Sometimes, Henry, angels must rush in where fools fear to tread. I haven't the faintest idea what that means, and I don't want it explained to me. In any event, you can go now, Dudley. I have solved my problem. Mrs. Hamilton is giving the money for the cathedral. But that was a foregone conclusion, providing you were willing to make a slight sacrifice of your principles. Don't you think it's worth it for this? This glorious edifice? I am not so sure of its glory at a time like this. Oh, you're not? No. These are rather lean years for the world, Henry. So many people need food, so many need shelter. That big roof could make so many little roofs. I'm dealing with a materialistic, selfish woman. She wouldn't listen to talk like that. Did you try? You came here so that I could have a cathedral. Well, I've got a cathedral. And I want you to get out of my house and get out of my life. And away from Julia. Suppose you pray for that, Henry. After all, it was a prayer that brought me here. Very well. I'll pray. Ah, 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 Henry. I'm afraid that's not a prayer. It was right for my heart. I want you to go. Julia does not. Julia? Get out. Get out. Julia's about to come down those stairs. Don't let her see you like this, Henry. Try to calm yourself. Dudley? He's gone. Oh, Debbie's awake. She wants to say goodnight to him. I just told you Dudley is gone. But where? How should I know? But why did he leave so suddenly? Because I got rid of him. I told him to go away. I fired him. Why? Because he's incompetent. He's no good at his job, and I cannot stand the sight of him. Henry! Believe me, Julia, I know what I'm doing. Two days have passed since Dudley disappeared, much to the relief of Bishop Henry Brom. And now it's early evening on Christmas Eve. Here's a list of your calls, Bishop, ending at Mrs. Hamilton's. Oh, and there's a taxi waiting for you outside. Thank you, Miss Cassaway. If you're through typing my sermon before I'm back, just leave the copies on my desk. Yes, sir. I'm sorry to keep you so late on Christmas Eve. Oh, it's all right, sir. Uh, Bishop Brom? Yes? There's still no word from Mr. Dudley. Miss Cassaway, I discharged Mr. Dudley. There's no reason at all to hear from him. Yes, sir. Now, if you don't mind, please tell Mrs. Brom that the taxi is waiting. We can go to the chop shows first, then the Vandovers are- Julia! Hey, Julia! Sylvester, what are you doing here? Well, when the call came in for a cab, I sure I tailed it over here. I was hoping there'd be another skating party. Hey, uh, where's Dudley? I don't know. Look, you got a preacher with you. Yes. Uh, this is... Don't, don't tell me! A wedding, you and Dudley! Sylvester, this is my husband, Bishop Brom. How do you do? Oh. And now, if you don't mind, we'd like to go to North Maple Street by taxi cab, Sylvester, not ice skates. Good evening, Miss Cassaway. Oh, Mr. Dudley. Did I startle you? Oh, uh, yes. I uh, I didn't hear you come in. Uh, but where have you been? Oh, here and there, Miss Cassaway. Why, we've been so worried about you. And poor Mrs. Brom, she's been popping in and out of here all day. Have I seen you? Have I heard from you? Where is she? She and the bishop are making Christmas calls. Oh, they'll be home? Oh, yes, sir. After Mrs. Hamilton's. Then they go to St. Timothy's for the midnight service. You should be home too, Miss Cassaway. I'll type that sermon for you. Oh, no, don't. The bishop told me- It's Christmas Eve. You should be with your family. Well, if you- Oh, thank you, Mr. Dudley. 
Merry Christmas, Mildred. Merry Christmas, Dudley. Now, let's get a load of this. Hmm. Henry's Christmas Sermon. A new cathedral. This is Hamilton's magnificent gesture. Money, pledges needed. <laughs> Sorry, Henry. That's no sermon for Christmas. Suppose you tell them the story of an empty stocking. Once upon a midnight clear, there was a child's cry. A blazing star hung over a stable, and wise men came with birthday gifts. We have forgotten many things over the centuries, but not that night. Whom did you say is calling, sir? Oh, I'm Dudley Stevens, Bishop Brom's new assistant. Would you mind telling Mrs. Hamilton I'm here? I don't believe she's expecting you, sir. Oh, I'm sure she isn't. Yes, sir. I'll wait in the music room. The music room, sir? Yes, there's a harp in there. I wonder if she mind if I... Oh, I'm afraid she would, sir. Oh. Well, in that event, you'd better hurry off and tell her. Yes, sir. I shall. Who are you? Oh, good evening, Mrs. Hamilton. This is a beautiful harp you have. My butler said that you told him you're Bishop Brom's assistant? Oh, yes, Mrs. Hamilton. The bishop will be along a little later. That music you're playing? I thought you'd recognize it. There's no one living that knows that composition. Except me. What a shame that Alan Cartwright died. That only you and I would know his music. Alan Cartwright died nearly 40 years ago. You couldn't have known him. I'm much older than you think, Mrs. Hamilton. Tell me about him. About Alan Cartwright. What is there to tell? He was the only man I ever loved. But I was afraid of poverty. So he went away and I never saw him again. Why am I telling you this? And so you married the rich George Hamilton. I made George happy, I think. Since he died, I've spent a fortune honoring his memory in empty monuments. Oh, they're no more empty than your own life, Mrs. Hamilton. Since you sent the man you loved away, you haven't allowed yourself to love anyone else. You've withdrawn into a shell, a cold and, alas, selfish woman. But what can I do? Well, I'll tell you what you can do. Break that shell. Now think of what you could do for others, and you'll no longer have time to think of yourself. Forgive yourself, Mrs. Hamilton, as Alan Cartwright forgave you long ago. <laughs> I really think he did. I know he did. <laughs> How did you know about Alan Cartwright? It doesn't matter, Mrs. Hamilton. They're at the front door now. Henry and Julia. I can't see them now. I can't. Yes. Yes, you'll see them. You'll go to the hall and you'll greet them in your usual warm-hearted manner. You'll come with me. And you'll stay, won't you, Dudley? No. No, I'm afraid I can't. I have a great deal of work to do. Now, don't keep them waiting. Bishop and Miss Brahm are here, madam. How do you do, Mrs. Hamilton? Julia, how nice of you to come and see me. And Henry, Merry Christmas. Henry, I said Merry Christmas. Oh, yes, Merry Christmas, Mrs. Hamilton. Oh, and no more of this Mrs. Hamilton silliness. My name is Agnes, and now we can all... Oh, he's gone. He's gone already. Gone? Who? Dudley. He was here? I might have known it. But where did he go? Oh, oh, that poor man. He said he had so much work to do. Really, Henry, you must make him take some rest. I've been trying to make him do just that. Oh, I can't thank you enough for sending him to me. Meeting Dudley? Oh, I know it sounds ridiculous, but... Meeting him has been the greatest spiritual experience of my life. How did you ever find him, Henry? More or less of an accident, I suppose. Or more or less of a miracle. Oh, it was, it was! Talking with this wonderful, understanding man has... Henry, I've decided I've changed my mind about the cathedral. You have? Yes, 
I'm going to give my money to those who need it, to the poor, the homeless, the unappreciated, and I want you to direct the spending of it. Now you see what Dudley's done, Henry? Yes, I... I see. And you understand? Mrs. Hamilton, Julia, forgive me, but I have to leave. There's someone I must see immediately. Henry? Henry, my dear fellow, sit down, sit down. Professor Wuthridge, I, I just had to see you. I'm delighted. Here, here, Henry, here. Uh, a glass of sherry. No, no thank you. Oh, but I insist. Henry, you see this bottle. Now watch. I fill two glasses. Behold, the bottle is still half full. And what's more, the sherry itself, it... It stimulates, it warms, it, it inspires. But no matter how much you drink, it never inebriates. And the contents never diminish. Always half full. Dudley's been here? Yes, and that bottle isn't all. He told me to look up some ancient texts in the library which no living scholar has ever been able to decipher. I read them as if they were English. Oh, let's face it, Henry. This Dudley fellow is not like the rest of us. He says he's an angel. An angel? That's funny. Nothing stopped me from saying it that time. Angel. He says he's an angel. From... from heaven? That I'm not so sure about. An angel? It's too bad. He's such a nice fellow. Oh, he's brought nothing but disaster to me. That's absurd. He and Julia were here the other day. She seemed happier than she'd been in years. He's made her despise me. Are you sure? That's why I've come to see you. Do you think it's all my own fault, Professor? You don't have to answer. I asked for this, in more ways than one. I suppose that Dudley came to me just to confirm that I had already lost Julia's love. Well, if there's anything I can do, Henry... There's nothing anyone can do. But there must be. You and Julia love each other. You always have. It's only partly true. I love Julia. Well, then, why don't you fight for her? Fight? How can I fight against- But you have a tremendous advantage over him. Advantage? Over an angel? Precisely. He's an angel. Julia's a creature of Earth. She's a woman, Henry. And you're a man. Yes. Yes, I am. If I were you, I'd get myself home and- Home? That's where he'll be. Waiting for Julia. Excuse me. Uh, happy Christmas. Henry, is that you, dear? Hello, Julia. Dudley? I came to say goodbye. I have to be moving along. Oh, well, where will you be going? Wherever they send me. They? My superior officers. Will we ever see you again? They seldom send us to the same place twice, Julia. We might form attachments. I don't know what you're talking about. No, of course not, Julia. Julia, I don't want to leave. Why? Well, there are few people who know the secret of making heaven here on Earth. And you are one of those rare people. You... you frighten me, Dudley. I think you ought to go. Julia, please. Please, don't send me away. What are you saying? That I'm... I'm tired of being a wanderer. I'm tired of an existence which is neither hot nor cold, hungry nor full. No. No, you must go away. And never come back. Don't look at me like that. Dudley, no! Henry? Henry! It's all right, Julia. It's all right, my darling. Go upstairs, dear. I'll handle this alone. As for you, Dudley, I have never before had to fight an angel. But I suggest you take off your coat and put up your dukes. Now why do you want to fight me, Henry? Because you're a thief, trying to steal the love that belongs to me. Henry, do you realize that as an angel I could quite possibly destroy you with a bolt of lightning? I don't care. Julia means more to me than my life. I'm not going to lose her. Ah, then I have news for you. I'm going. I'll accept that as fact when I see it happen. Oh, no, you won't. Because when I'm gone, you will never know that an angel visited this house. And Julia? What about her? There will be no memory with her either. Or with Debbie, or the Professor, or anyone else. 
Oh, I don't trust you. You may, Henry, because your prayer has been answered. That's not true. I prayed for a cathedral. No, no, Henry, you prayed for guidance. And that's been given to you. I'm being paged. Uh, just a minute, please. Goodbye, Henry. If... if we should need you again, will you come back? Not I. I'm requesting an assignment at the other end of the universe. Is that because I was so difficult? Oh, no. No, no. This difficulty was in me. When an immortal finds himself envying the mortal trusted to his care, it is a definite signal of danger. Yes, yes, I heard you the first time. Now go upstairs, take her in your arms, and kiss her for me, you lucky Henry. Julia? Julia! Quiet, darling. You'll wake Debbie up. Are you all right? Why, yes, of course I am. Henry, did you get that for Debbie? Get what for Debbie? That little angel there on her bed. Why, no. I can't imagine where it came from. I don't know. I... I have the most inexplicable feeling of happiness. Why, so do I. Oh, Julia. I love you, Julia. I love you, Henry. Listen, the bells from St. Timothy's. It's almost midnight. You'll have to hurry. Oh, my sermon. It was all about the cathedral. It will never do now. Don't worry, dear. You'll think of something. Something even better. Merry Christmas, Henry. Merry Christmas, darling. Tonight, I want to tell you the story of an empty stocking. Once upon a midnight clear, there was a child's cry. A blazing star hung over a stable, and wise men came with birthday gifts. We have forgotten many things through the centuries, but not that night. We celebrate it with stars on Christmas trees, with the sound of bells, and with gifts. But especially with gifts. You give me a book, I give you a tie. Aunt Martha has always wanted an orange squeezer, and Uncle Harry could do with a new pipe. Oh, we forget nobody. Adult or child, all the stockings are filled. All that is, except one. And we have even forgotten to hang it up. The stocking for the child born in a manger. It is his birthday we're celebrating. Don't let us ever forget that. Let us ask ourselves what he would wish for most, and then let each put in his share. Loving kindness, warm hearts, and a stretched out hand of tolerance, all the shining gifts to make a peace on earth. Thank you for listening to this production of The Bishop's Wife, starring Rachel Cordell as Julia Brom, Brian Cadena as Bishop Henry Brom, Jessica Ma as Miss Cassaway, Debbie, and Rupert, Casey Reardon as Professor Wutheridge and Bobby, Bianca Kronig as Mrs. Hamilton and Matilda, Andrew Frost as Sylvester, Stevens, and Miller, and with Chris Dane as Dudley, the Angel, and your announcer. If you like this production and want to hear more audio dramas, please check out Dane Studios on SoundCloud and YouTube. Thank you for listening.